Following the release of Final Fantasy VII, Square Enix had become one of the companies to look out for in the late 90s. With their excellent storytelling and compelling characters, it seemed as though they had found their footing within the gaming realm. Square Enix, however, did not want to lose this momentum, and so in two short years, we got Final Fantasy VIII. But this one was different. It was trying to break the mold even further than Final Fantasy VII did. Final Fantasy VIII seemed to have more of a focus towards cinematic storytelling through its music, full motion videos, and especially its characters and their relationships with each other. The environment for Final Fantasy VIII was also drastically different from any other Final Fantasy that came before it, but it still managed to create a memorable story for the franchise. It's because of this that we still see future Final Fantasies take influences from Final Fantasy VIII. And so, today, we'll be looking at almost all the Final Fantasy VIII references in Final Fantasy XIV. As always, this will cover story elements from Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy XIV, so consider this your spoiler warning. And remember, if I missed anything, let me know in the comments. Final Fantasy VIII was first released in Japan in February 1999. The story follows a man named Squall Leonhardt, who was the series' first Gunblade wielder. His outfit can be obtained in Final Fantasy XIV by subscribing to the game for 330 days. His gunblade, the revolver, was obtained from the collector's edition of Shadowbringers. Now let's talk about the gunbreaker job. Gun weapons have been introduced into the game before, but Shadowbringers was when we had the gunblade available to the players for the first time. A lot of this job is based off of abilities that Squall and Cypher use in Final Fantasy VIII and extended crossover games. We'll first get into the abilities that are references to Squall's abilities. The first is Hyper Velocity. This ability takes on the same animation that Squall has in the opening cutscene of the game. These next three abilities are all Squall's limit breaks in Final Fantasy VIII. These are Rough Divide, Faded Circle, and Blasting Zone. And finally, we have the Final Fantasy XIV ability, Blood Fest. This is going to get a little confusing, but I'll try to break it down. The animation of the Final Fantasy XIV ability is Squall's Draw animation from Final Fantasy VIII. However, the name Bloodfest is named after Cypher's ability from Final Fantasy VIII. The animation of Double Down in Final Fantasy XIV comes from Cypher's Bloodfest ability. I'm fairly certain the reason why Double Down was named the way it is now is because the Bloodfest name is already in the game. This is a good segue to Cypher's abilities in Final Fantasy XIV. The names of No Mercy and Demon Slice are abilities that Cypher uses in Final Fantasy VIII Royal Guard and the Emo Battle Pose come from Cypher's Taunts. And finally, the names of Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, Lightning Shot, and Gnashing Fang comes from Squall's moveset in Dissidia. And now before we move on, Zell's face tattoos are available as one of the face tattoos in the character creation. The level 2 range limit break, Desperado, is named after Laguna's limit break. I'll also mention that there is only one minion and one mount that is a reference to Final Fantasy VIII this time. These are the Eden Minor minion and the Eden mount. Both of these are obtainable after the Eden raid. More on this raid later on in the video. With the introduction of the Gold Saucer, one of the minigames is Triple Triad. All the basic mechanics, rules, and even the music all come from Final Fantasy VIII. There are even NPCs throughout the overworld that you can challenge and when you win, you can even win a card from them much like the original game. 
A reference we see in the main story is Alizé's familiar, Angelo. She mentions that she named her familiar after her childhood dog. In Final Fantasy VIII, Renoa owns a dog named Angelo, and she has had him since her childhood. Angelo often accompanies Renoa and even helps out in battle. And now, let's move on to the bosses. The Tomberry King makes an appearance in Wanderer's Palace. Just like the fight in Final Fantasy VIII, it uses an ability called Everybody's Grudge. The Summoned Diablos makes an appearance in the Lost City of Amdapur. Its opening animation and its summon attack is taken directly from Final Fantasy VIII. The summon of Kezakotl appears in the Academia Ander dungeon. Very much like the original summon, a lot of its abilities are based off the element Thunder. In Eureka Pagos, there is a fate known as Brothers, which feature a small Minotaur and a big Minotaur. This is a reference to the Brothers summon in Final Fantasy VIII, two brothers of different sizes as well. Fenrir, who appears at the end of Snowcloak, uses an ability called Lunar Cry. This ability is named after the phenomenon that happens in Final Fantasy VIII in which monsters are pulled off the moon and rain onto the world. The Alcyon Eye in Denzimel Darkhold uses an ability called Eyes on Me, which is a reference to the song that Julia writes in the game and is the main theme of Final Fantasy VIII. And finally, the ability Double and Triple, which allows users to cast spells in succession used by the Ashians come from Final Fantasy VIII. The spell effects are also very similar to the original game. And before we move on to the raid, I need to first apologize as in the first 7 videos in this reference series, I have failed to mention any of the airship names in Final Fantasy XIV that are references to the original airship in the series. I will absolutely make up for it in the What I Miss video at the end of the series, but for now, let's talk about the airship that appears at the end of Endwalker, the Ragnarok. This spacefaring airship is a reference to the Ragnarok found in Final Fantasy VIII, in which this airship also had the capacity to fly into space, and was an important part of the story in Final Fantasy VIII. Finally, the big Final Fantasy VIII reference, the Eden Raids. This raid is based off the summon of the same name in Final Fantasy VIII. Many aspects of the story draw heavy influences from the story of Final Fantasy VIII. We'll first take a look at the music in which several are rearranged from the original version of their pieces, such as Blue Fields, Don't Be Afraid, and Force Your Way. <laughs> 
On the first floor, we face off against Eden Prime. During its ultimate attack, it does a faithful recreation of Eternal Breath, the attack that Eden uses when summoned in Final Fantasy VIII. Next, we have the Fate Breaker. This boss mirrors Griever in Final Fantasy VIII, in which Griever was manifested from Squall's perception of strength, whereas Fate Breaker was manifested through Reen's memories. The music used in this fight is the legendary beast from Final Fantasy VIII. And now, we face off against Gaia. In this form, Gaia will junction and draw from various primals against the players. Junctioning and drawing are two main gameplay mechanics within Final Fantasy VIII. Now, before we move on to the final boss of the Eden Raids, we need to first talk about Gaia. Introduced to us after the first tier of the Eden Raid, Gaia embodies many of the characteristics of several characters in Final Fantasy VIII. She talks to herself much like Squall, has leg cramps much like Laguna, and can wield powerful magic like the sorceresses of Final Fantasy VIII. However, she has a dark past. When her memories come back, she shows her true form. The Oracle of Darkness. This fight is a reference to the final battle with Ultimecia in Final Fantasy VIII. Two abilities that the Oracle uses that Ultimecia uses in Final Fantasy VIII are Hell's Judgment and Shockwave Pulsar. At the end of the Eden Raids, Gaia finds herself lost and wandering seemingly forever. This mirrors when Squall is lost in the void at the end of Final Fantasy VIII. However, before she gives up, In a scene similar to the final cutscenes of Final Fantasy VIII, the two appear in a field brimming with life. <laughs> 
Now, before we end, I need to talk about one more thing. When I wrote the script, it was right before 6.15. Now that 6.15 has dropped, I have to insert this segment before releasing this video. Within the first few quests of the Hildebrand storyline in Endwalker, Hildebrand gets abducted by a mysterious UFO. This UFO reveals itself to be the adorable Poopoo. Poopoo first appeared in Final Fantasy VIII in which it mysteriously shows up in various locations before finally revealing itself to the player. And there we have it. Final Fantasy VIII had tried to improve upon so many aspects that the previous Final Fantasies introduced. It also gave us a look into deeper narratives and much more cinematic storytelling than ever before. And the future Final Fantasies have so much to build off of thanks to Final Fantasy VIII. A quick shout out to my free company for helping me shoot some of this footage. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, it will always be appreciated and don't be afraid to comment if I missed anything. In the next video, we'll be looking at the world of Final Fantasy IX.